You probably don't get enough aftercare in your relationship, and you probably don't even know what that means. Well, I'm gonna teach you, because aftercare is incredibly important in your romantic relationship. It may be one of the biggest factors that determines if you stay together as a couple, if you are satisfied in your life, and it's one of the biggest pieces in the bedroom. And you may not even have heard of it before, I'm going to teach you all about it today. Don't worry if you haven't heard about it and if you don't get it, and if you do know a little bit about it and you're saying, yeah, Adam, I do need this. I'm here for this. I'm totally here to teach you. I'm going to teach you today everything you need to know about aftercare, why it's so important and how to get the best results out of it. We will talk about that and especially stay tuned to the second half of this video because I'm going to have the how to guide on how to make aftercare work. Even if you're, even if you're not really sure quite yet how to make it work. I'll show you in the second half of this video. And while we're at it, if you need more information on this topic or any other topic connected to attachment, relationships, and psychology, make sure you check out my website, adamlanesmith.com. You're gonna to find tons of resources on there on fixing your attachment, boosting your relationships. I have my attachment bootcamp video course on there, for example, which walks you through how men bond and how women bond. A lot of couples take that course and they get so much closer as they go through it. Check that out on adamlanesmith.com. So what is aftercare? Where does this come from? Well, interestingly, it comes from the kink community where they work on aftercare after they have done some pretty serious activities in the bedroom that may need like, okay, let's check back in and reassure each other that we love each other. That's where this term has come from, but it really works for us. What we need to know, all of us, all of us, what we need to understand is aftercare is the portion of the bedroom activity that takes place once the physical aspects are finished. Once, so to speak, the male partner most likely has climaxed and we are now, okay, toweling off, what comes next? Do you jump up? Do you play Xbox? Do you leap out the window? Do you grab your phone and start ignoring each other? Do you, what do you do? This is where most couples fall flat. This is halftime, by the way. This is not the end of the experience. This is the halftime moment. Now, the famous lover Casanova actually attributed his success to all sleeping with as many women as possible, but also making them all happy by propping himself up on pillows afterward and continuing to engage with them. So that even if he fell asleep, it looked like he was listening. He wasn't just actually out, totally out. He looked very interested and was giving aftercare. Aftercare is part of the experience. You need to be bonding, sharing, connecting. Now I do a lot of teaching about how the male experience with orgasm is different from the female experience with orgasm. And men, typically we do receive oxytocin, but it seems to serve a little bit of a different purpose. We may not, may not bond as extensively at that moment of climax as women do during their moment of climax. That seems to be what the research is really indicating. Men may receive a bigger rush of dopamine, for example, where it feels really good and we have a positive association with that woman rather than Im intimate emotional bonding with her. This has given rise of a, obviously to the cliche that women just want to cuddle afterward and men just want to eat a sandwich and go to sleep. Not totally true, but true enough that we laugh about it and we know that there's some truth behind it. Now, oxytocin is released in men and they do get oxytocin. It may not be exactly the same way at exactly the same moments, but they are going to be getting it during the sexual experience, perhaps, especially if they're well bonded to the partner. But afterward, they can also be getting it even if they didn't get much during the sexual experience. They can get that oxytocin during the aftercare moment. Women, if they have achieved climax, Sometimes a big if, but if they have, I'm assuming you're in a loving relationship, foreplay floods you with oxytocin, the physical act of sex floods you with oxytocin, and climaxes flood you with oxytocin. So afterward, you are flooded, or should be, flooded with oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love hormone that makes you feel warm and cared for and nurtured. It releases in the absence of stress. So if you have performative sex where you're trying to earn approval, you may not be releasing much oxytocin. In fact, if you have a difficult childhood where you don't have oxytocin at all, you may be terrified of the aftercare experience. We can talk about that a bit. But you may, you may be the one trying to leap out the window with your clothes trailing behind you. That may be you. You may be running from the aftercare because you're aware of the intimate bonding that can happen. Aftercare is that moment afterward where they you snuggle up, you spoon, or you laugh, you lay your head on their shoulder, you connect for a moment, and you talk. So we used to call it pillow talk sometimes, or just snuggling, or bonding, or just enjoying afterglow. Afterglow is a word that we've used for this period before. Those things tie in with this moment where you are feeling closer. You're feeling closer to the other person. It feels good. You laugh. 
You tickle each other. You poke each other. You make a joke. You share a, a YouTube video. You put on your favorite movie and watch it together. You eat ice cream. You eat sandwiches together. Great. You towel off together and then settle back in the bed, right? You use the bathroom quick. You come right back and then you hold hands. You snuggle. You share a moment. Five to ten minutes, maybe. No, more than that, but five, maybe five to ten minutes. And you start even more oxytocin bonding. Now, if the oxytocin has been flowing, this will boost the effect because you will really feel close and connected and intimate. And we'll talk about specific ways to really maximize this and how to really do this for couples maybe who aren't used to it yet. I teach that in my coaching. I'll teach you today. But what you need to know is that this is the golden window for so much bonding. Men benefit just tremendously from this. Tremendously. Women really get hurt often if they don't have it. A lot of women have never heard of aftercare because they've never experienced it because they're so used to men jumping up, dragging their pants on and going off to play Xbox or, or leap out the window, whatever it is. They've never even stopped and said, oh, what, I can, I can have someone hold me afterward? Like he would still want to be in my presence after I'm uh, toweling off? He would, he would want to be around me? They're shocked. Some women are in their 40s or 50s and haven't even heard that they can get this love afterward because they've never experienced it. It's kind of horrifying, but if that's you, Never fear. You can make this happen. I, in the second part of this video, again, I'm going to teach you how to how to build this into your relationship. It's not as hard as you think it is. As long as the person has even a smidge of kindness in them, we'll get you there. This is what makes women not feel used. So if any women are watching this and you have felt used after the bedroom act, this is usually the culprit. If you're not getting aftercare, it feels like they were just there for your body. And now they're done and they're out. And you were more connected to them than they were to you. This is where most women feel hurt. And some women are oxytocin averse and they're terrified. So they are the ones getting up and running away afterward. They, they pull away. Their body language says, get away from me. They are terrified afterward and they can't put their finger on why. This is usually why. It's that absolute, please don't bond with me. I don't want to get close to anyone. Hookup culture kind of, kind of physical piece. Or even in long-term committed relationships sometimes. Just, I'm not safe being close to people. You can do the stuff and then get out. That happens, unfortunately. This is where the bonding and safety is supposed to really happen. This is where you really see if your partner really cares about you and how deeply they care. This is when you feel your both of your walls go down and your guards are low and you connect and you share this warm, vulnerable moment. That's what it's supposed to be. If you have never experienced it, don't despair, don't weep. It's okay. Here's how you do it. You talk to your partner and you say, hey, you know what? I heard this weird thing on the internet. People actually love each other after sex. People actually spend time together afterward. I would really like to introduce this in our relationship because, and I'm not mad at you, but sometimes I can feel used. But if we were to do this, I think I would feel great. Can we please introduce this so that we can both start bonding? And I think it'll be good for both of us. Let's give it a shot. So you set afterward, after the physical experience is done. You do this before the sex, by the way. You do this before that so you don't say, hey, wait, don't leave me. You do it before you set the expectation that this is how it's going to be from now on, at least for a while to experiment with it. And you say, all right, well, what we're going to do is after sex, then we will just sit together. Even if we just hold hands, if it's hot and sweaty, we'll hold hands and, and sit separately, but at least some physical contact and we'll talk. We will talk. We won't whip out our phones, maybe one phone to watch some YouTubes together, but we're not grabbing our phones individually and just dopamine binging. We're going to be connecting. We'll put on a movie or we will just hold hands and laugh. We will tickle each other or I'll lay my head on your chest or you lay your head on my chest. We just stay in physical contact and we enjoy each other's presence as human beings once the lovemaking has finished. Minimum five to ten minutes. I would say ten, but even five would be of benefit. Even five minutes! Could make a difference. What you're going to experience as you go through this is you might, one or both of you could be uncomfortable. It might feel weird. Like, wait, we've already finished having sex and, and now we have to stay together for five minutes? <laughs> Sounds weird, but a lot of couples live that way. Where this would be a weird concept to them and uncomfortable. If that's you, never fear. <laughs> the oxytocin becomes positively addictive in a good way and pulls you in more and more and more so that you will want more. You both will. What you're going to notice is you're going to like each other more. The fighting should decrease. If you're, if you have fighting problems in your relationship, often it will from the oxytocin bonding. The stress could decrease. You get a lot of GABA after you get oxytocin, for example. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which suppresses anxiety and depression responses in the brain. It, what it does is it shortens cortisol release and at least it lessens the severity of a cortisol release as well. So your stress levels should go down, which you'll experience is less depression or less anxiety, usually symptom, the symptoms of them. Yes, this can help you fight anxiety. You will experience 
an increased bonding in your relationship. You'll actually probably enjoy the physical intimacy a lot more. A lot of women actually report they that when they do this, they enjoy the aftercare more than they enjoy the physical activity. I don't know if that speaks to the quality of their lovemaking process or if, if they just love the oxytocin that much. Some women who've been craving it their whole lives, they live for that stuff. And this is a great way to get it. And be reassured of your partner's love. So if you are looking to implement this, simply have a conversation with your partner and let them know how important it is. Set a five minute timer if you must and have something to do afterward. Even if you're just laying together and laying your head on each other's chest, take turns back and forth, feel that comfort, feel the bonding, feel the love, connect as a couple like you were supposed to. This is aftercare and yes, it is this simple. Build this into your relationship, have the conversations and make it happen. Please drop me a comment down below while you're clicking the subscribe button, by the way, drop me a comment down below and say, Adam, I've never heard of this before. Adam, I have heard of this before, but I haven't done this much. Adam, I have been doing this and it's amazing. Adam, I am going to try this with my partner and then come back hopefully and leave me another comment. Adam, I tried it. Oh, it was great. Come back and leave me your results and let me know. The reason I'm asking for this is because a lot of people are going to be clicking down in the comments to see, wait a minute, is this legit? Does this real? Does aftercare really exist? A lot of women right now are watching this going, I might be crying. I've never had this in my life and I'm in my 30s and what have I been doing? This has been missing. Please leave a comment for their sake. <laughs> Like, yes, this is real. It's amazing. Or, hey, it's okay, sisters. I haven't heard of it either, but now I'm going to try it. Leave me those comments down below. Share so that other people get some reassurance because there's going to be people watching this who are going to need that. Also, again, check adamlanesmith.com. If you have never had a ta if you've never had aftercare, it may be that you have attachment issues and you've never had the guts to ask for it, or you never knew that you could get this love and bonding. Maybe you're afraid of oxytocin, you're oxytocin averse. Maybe you need to fix your attachment. Women, especially who have avoidant attachment style, can become very oxytocin averse. Check my website, adamlanesmith.com. I've got resources on there to help you fix those attachment issues to make it easier to climax, for example, to get you more oxytocin. The more oxytocin oxytocin you have from good relationships that are securely attached, the easier it is to climax and the easier it is to enjoy that afterglow effect during the aftercare. So you want to fix that process? Check adamlanesmith.com. And please, again, drop me a comment for the sake of the other people watching this.